everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to talk to you guys about something that's really creeping hard into the medical community, and that is product shaming. And it's something that we've seen for a long time in the tech sector with things like cell phones, but now it's, it's creeping really hardcore into the medical community and it, it involves a product that has usually some sort of numerical value and oh, that one's old. Case in point, I went into a Verizon store uh, about a year ago and when I was in there, uh, I was there looking for a new phone because of new cameras. That was the only reason. And because my GPS app kept crashing in the phone and I had a Note 4. Well, a Note 4 was actually a really good phone and I used that little guy right up until last year. Now it's probably five, six years old. It didn't really matter to me because to be honest, the difference between a Note 4 and a Note 10, the one that this video is being recorded on, it wasn't that major of a difference. Not at all. In fact, but the problem is, is Samsung did get sued because their product updates would slow down the phone intentionally. And they did that so that they would make you buy another phone. But by putting the numeric value 4 after Note, it inferred automatically a date and time stamp on your device. So what they learned is by doing that, Apple iPhone is one big example, is that you would want the latest and greatest, the highest number that you could get. But the problem was, is if you take a look at the amount that you get for the cost increase, it's really a diminishing return. So when I went into that Verizon store and I looked them in the eye and I told them I had a Note 4, he goes, ooh. He's like, ah, I don't know, man. That's why you still have that. And I looked at him and I'm like, are you serious? Because it doesn't really do anything that different from what you guys are currently offering. And it's true. It really didn't. I mean, there's some cool features on this phone. I do appreciate the speed that it can, that it can. And right now people are going to say, oh my gosh, you're, you got a Note 10. Ooh, Note 20s came out last year. Psh, please. This Note 10, trust me, it, when this guy dies, whatever happens to it, I got a little crack in the screen at best. Uh, I'm going to get another Note 10 probably because this guy is probably one of the best phones I've ever used. But going back to the medical side, <laughs> I had a discussion today where we were talking about some of our older devices and I mentioned that we do have some GE Solar still in service. And somebody goes, oh, you still got Solars? And it's like, yeah, and they're mounted on a Stevas, a Steva anesthesia machines. And see, the thing is not every place needs the latest and greatest. If you have an if you have a, a GI lab or something like that where you still use a Stevas with Solar 8000s, then more power to you because that might be all that you need. See, we do have a life expectancy on devices and a life expectancy is usually 8 to 10 years for very technical devices. And for non-technical devices, it is usually 10 to 15 years. We all know that you get more years than that, but that's, that's generally the lifespan. But that doesn't mean that's the end of the life on the device. Now, product shaming is getting to be a real problem in the medical community because let's say a device has Windows 7, okay? And people are like, oh, you got to get rid of Windows 7. It's, it's not supported anymore. And it's like, it's Windows 7 embedded. And this device isn't even networked. It's not even networked. It could be on some autometry piece of equipment and it's running Windows 7. It's not connected to nothing. It's just used for archiving storage of pictures of your eyes. And they're like, ooh, you got to get rid of that. It's got Windows 7. That's product shaming, all right? The device works perfectly fine. Yes, everything's getting old on it, and yes, you are taking an increased risk at maybe not getting parts, but as you guys well know, especially devices that have a computer inside them, a lot of things can be done to preserve that device, despite what the, the OEM wants you to think. There's a lot of things we can do to copy disks or whatever to keep that device running. And hell, a lot of those motherboards that are in those computers, you can find those on aftermarket too. So guys, product shaming, it is a problem and it's getting to be very, very annoying just because a device is approaching end of life or just because it's past end of life. It doesn't mean necessarily that it's a bad product or that you should immediately throw it in the trash. That is garbage and that is a sales technique and I'm, I'm here to stand right in front of everybody and say enough is enough. All right, if you have some service that's off and, and on its own, like let's say somebody has got a private practice and they use a analog x-ray. Well, maybe that's all they need. All right. They don't need some 
$1.2 million x-ray system that's all DR and networked. Maybe all they're doing is shooting plates so that you can see. I don't know, but maybe that's all they need. So guys, product shaming, it's getting to be a serious problem in this community. And all that I'm doing is I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tell you that think about the application of the device, their use case scenario, and maybe they don't need a new device after all. Yes, they take a risk at it not, no longer being supported, but that does not necessarily mean that they need to throw it in the trash and go out and buy another one. There is options, okay? Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. It's just uh, based on a conversation I had today, product shaming, it, we see it all the time in electronics and it really just irritates me because maybe you have a Note 4 and it's perfectly fine for you. That does not mean just because it's got a four after the title or because it's from four or five years ago that it's trash. That's a trash opinion. And that is the consumerism that is just completely taken over the medical community. And just being honest, it's very disgusting. And that's why, guys, I am pushing for right to repair. And I'm standing right alongside all these other companies like Avante. And I, I'm standing right there with you guys, right to repair, because that... Just because the manufacturer doesn't want to sell a part anymore doesn't mean that we shouldn't have schematics and we can't fix it ourselves. Because this use it and throw it away mentality has got to come to an end, guys. We're trying to save the planet here along with some dollars. Thanks for watching, guys.